Okay, so I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of this lab and the equipment involved and what you're going to be doing just so that it goes a little smoother when you're actually in there doing it. Okay, so first thing we have here is our multimeter, which has two probes attached to it, okay, a red and a black. This should all be hooked up when you get there, but I'm showing you it so you have a bit of a background knowledge, okay? We also have here our power source, and this lab is just going to be a straight up 9 volt battery, okay? So you're going to make sure your multimeter is set to the 200 DC volt setting, okay? And then these probes, what they do is they're capable of uh, measuring the potential difference between two points, right? So a nine volt battery, what does that mean? Well, a battery, right, is two basically reservoirs of charges that would like to get away from each other. They have potential energy. Specifically for a nine volt battery, what that means is the potential energy at, say, the negative terminal for the electrons there they would lose nine volts of that potential electric energy if they were allowed to go where they would like to go, which is the positive terminal. So per coulomb of charge, you would lose nine joules of energy going from there to there, right? The potential difference. So, so as we would expect, when I uh, put these probes from a multimeter onto the nine volt battery, it's saying that, yes, the potential difference between this point and this point per coulomb of charge is, well, this battery has been used a little bit, so that's what happens when your battery dies. The potential difference between each point goes down and goes down and goes down until eventually essentially there's no potential energy difference between one terminal and the other, so the charges have more or less equaled out and you need a new battery, right? Okay, so that's the idea there, but what are we going to use it for? Well, we're going to create a potential difference between two parallel charged plates, okay? So that's what we're going to use our battery for, our power source to build up a potential difference across these two conductive plates painted on with conductive uh, ink there, okay? And this is conductive paper. So the negative terminal here, I'm gonna attach one black cable, okay? And then to the positive terminal, the red one. And then those are attached now to the plates themselves through here, okay? So now what we can do is measure the potential difference across our plates. And it should be close-ish to, well, to eight for us, right? Because we saw this battery had a voltage of 8.1, no longer a voltage of nine, right? So across the entire distance, the potential difference is just the same as the battery's potential difference. Okay, so that's just an idea of the setup. That's how you use these probes. Now, as for the data you're actually gonna be collecting, for the first part, you want to find some equipotential lines. So basically what you're gonna do is is keep the red one on one of the terminals, okay? And then it asks you to find a place where the potential difference is one volt or one joule per coulomb. In other words, where the difference in potential energy between your red probe and your black probe, the positions those are at, where the difference in potential energy between those is one joule for every coulomb of charge, okay? So let's just kind of poke around until we get a reading of one on our multimeter there. So you can see that's four. So there's still too much potential energy difference. 1.6, getting closer. 1.0, look at that. Got it. Okay. So now what you're going to do is you're going to record that position. Now do this carefully. Okay. You're going to be marked on how you uh, record that. So notice where my black probe is. I'm going to now have my partner come and look Okay, and take their data sheet and record that on the copy of the conductive paper that you have with your lab. That's where you're going to be recording your data. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean. So I would have my partner now record with some pencil. Okay, not on the conductive paper, on this copy from your lab. Okay, but that's why the numbers are handy. So you see down here we've got 16, and over here it's at 9. So say just about at the 16, 9 point, okay, your partner would now say, Right, they would now go here and say, okay, 16 and about nine, and they would record that there was a reading of one volt there, okay, a potential difference of one volt there, okay. Now you would just repeat that process until you can find another place where the potential difference from the with a black probe, right, when you place it, it also has 1.0, so you move it up, up, up. Keep going as you find each one. You're going to do this about five times, okay, until you find five places where it, the potential difference is one volt, okay? And then your uh, lab partners will be recording as you go. Once you've got five for one volt, you're just going to repeat that process as it says in your instructions, okay? Do it again at three volts, so get five points where the potential difference is three volts, and then do it again for 
five volts, where the potential difference is five volts. If your battery is pretty dead, I have checked them, but in case something's happened and the battery's pretty dead and it can't achieve five volts of potential difference, that's fine. Maybe just do one, two, three instead of one, three, five, something like that, whatever you're capable of achieving, okay, with your battery. So you're just going to do that. And then when you're done, map out those equal potential lines that you've just experimentally found. Okay, now for the field lines, this, for this one, you don't need to change anything about the setup at all. Okay, you keep that set up exactly the way it is. But now what you're trying to do is map out the electric field. And you're doing that by finding the direction of the electric field at five locations within your parallel plates here. Okay, so the way to do that is to find where the potential difference is at a maximum when you have these two things that are always at a constant separation. So the way to keep them at a constant separation is that they've been cut to have two flat sides there, okay? So you're gonna keep the two flat sides together so that these are always the same distance apart. And don't forget, you need to measure whatever distance that is with a ruler, so make sure you record the distance between the two probe tips um, using the ruler that is there, okay? Make sure you record that. You may even find it helpful to tape them like I've done here so you know they're not gonna wiggle too much on you, okay? And you're gonna place them somewhere on the uh, conductive paper between your two plates. Now notice there, when I have them in that orientation, there is a potential difference, a voltage of zero, right? Which is probably what you would have predicted, honestly, especially based on what you just did in the last one. But you'll see that today, okay? Now, what you're gonna do is you want to pivot the black one around the red one, okay? So kind of like that, and touch at new places until you find, right, the biggest voltage you can find with that red one. So the red one is staying fixed, the black one is pivoting, okay? And you're trying to do that until you find the biggest possible potential difference. When you do, so there you can see I'm now at 0 0.7, right? When I was up here, so I started at zero, right? And then as I pivoted, it grew to 0 0.2 there, right? There it's 0 0.5. Now I'm getting 0 0.6. If I continue to pivot, okay, it's back down to 0 0.4, and now it's 0 0.2. Okay, so it seems like I've gone too far. And so there we go. It looks like that maximum was at 0 0.6. So now we're gonna say that the electric field at that point is this way, straight from the red to the black. And I'll let you think about why that makes sense since the red is hooked up to the positive terminal, okay? but. On now, again, you would get your partner and say, okay, right there for this position, this is where we got the maximum potential and that's the electric field direction there, therefore, okay? So take note of the position here, then you go to your other copy of the conductive paper and you would say, okay, so there it looks like the electric field was, you know, that way. Okay, now I didn't do that very carefully, but that's the idea. Okay, and very important, you need to make sure you record that number as well. So when we got that maximum there, okay, that 0.7 that we found, which was the highest on this rotation, right? So we got it to a 0.6, okay? Make sure you are recording that there on the table for the field lines portion of the lab, okay? You need to make sure you're writing down the maximum voltage you obtained, the distance between the probe tips, that should be staying constant anyway, so you only need it to record it once from the ruler, but that maximum voltage obtained, you're gonna need it for each of the five points you're gonna do this at. So try to do it at five points that are different both vertically and horizontally, right? So don't just do them all on one line and don't just do them all in one line that way, right? Try and go boop, 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 all over the place, okay? But just five of them, make sure you're recording the maximum voltage you get every time, and then don't forget to do the direction, right? So for example, for that one, I've drawn in my arrow from red to black where I found where I found the 0 0.7 point, right? And then I also recorded the 0 0.7 maximum voltage. So maybe you wanna split up one person does the, the pivoting, one person does the electric field direction recording, and one person records the maximum, the actual number, that uh, was the maximum that you found.